get There we go. Congratulations, Ari. Yeah, yeah. Good At least you got the final five again. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah. How long were you sick? Uh, I actually was sick. I was very sick for that day, uh -huh. the day before. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of an injury that led up over time. Um, right. It's hard to show that when there's all this other stuff that they need to show mm -hmm. in the time that they have, which I understand. But it was a little strange that it happened so quickly. It's like, oh, now Eric's on the ground. But I do understand that they, they wanted that to be kind of the surprise to start off the finale. Like, I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, go back in time, maybe 15 days, 11, 11, 12, 15 days, somewhere in there. I had a cut on my leg. It was at the new Gota Beach. I had cut mm -hmm. my leg on a rock, and it was on my right leg and the shin. Um, the Survivor Medical team had been watching it, and I took care of it, and it actually started to heal up. And so it was okay, and they're like, you know what, just watch it. You'll be fine. My brother comes to visit much later, and he's actually looking me up and down, realizing, oh, you're skinny, you're scrawny, whatever. And he's like, dude, your leg, what's wrong with your leg? And I look back at my leg, and it's starting to get infected. And at that point, I was like, oh, crap, we got to do something. This is not good. That was day 34, I think, 34, 35. Wow. Anyway, so it's all infected, and we talked with the survivor medical team, and they're like, you know what, you need to just drink water, eat as much food as you can, which is hard to do. Yeah, when um, you don't have any. Right, and they have a great, Survivor is a great medical team. They want to take care of all their contestants, but they can't give you things. Like, they can't give you what you need to heal up at the right. same time. Right. Um, so then we go to the we go to the tribal council in which Brenda was voted off um, the episode before the finale. We walk into tribal council and I'm already starting to feel dizzy at that tribal council. I'm sitting down. It's getting worse. I'm really, really dizzy. I'm kind of going in and out. But I'm trying to keep myself together because if I fall off the stool at that tribal council, there's probably you're probably going to go home before whoever else gets voted off that day. And I actually thought I was very safe that day, which I, it turned out that I was. They were targeting Brenda. Um, so I'm on the stool, I'm going in and out, there's all kinds of questions being asked by Jeff, none to me, and I can't even really answer them even if he did. We go up and I vote, I come back, and I'm just like, hold it together, hold it together the whole time. The votes get read, I think that there's seven votes, and I think that Sherry goes home at that vote. Whoa. So I didn't know what was going on, okay? And at the same time, I'm like rubbing my head and looking around. I look up and I see Brenda, and I wave to her because I see my friend Brenda. That actually, when I look up to see Brenda, is when she's getting her torch snuffed, and she turns and says evil words to, every, to everybody for voting her out. So mm -hmm. at that point, I was just like, oh, hi, there's Brenda, and I just waved to her like, oh, my Amazing. friend. So that's something that like nobody understands, and I, I said this in all the interviews at Ponderosa, but none of that really gets shown on the show. Yeah. Um, but that was what was going on. We leave Tribal Council, I immediately go down, and I'm like, I need a doctor, I need a doctor, I need a doctor, everything's spinning, and from that point on, you see what you see on TV. Um, I can hear everybody talking, but it's kind of like, some of it's sinking in, some of it's not sinking in. I'm like not even aware that Brenda isn't even there at that point. Wow. Like it's just, it's just, there was no awareness at that point of what was going on. You had lost it. Yeah. Um, and then we go to the hospital, they immediately start an IV, they immediately start all these different prescriptions, they figure out what I want, they give me penicillin, and from there I start to heal up immediately and regain my consciousness. And then I go, I shake it off in the morning, I'm like, what the hell, like what happened yeah. last night? And then they inform me, they're like, how do you think it happened? And I'm like, well, Sherry got, went home, right? And they're like, absolutely not. Like Brenda went home, and I'm like, Brenda? I'm like, why would Brenda go home? And I'm thinking to myself, like, who would have done that? And I'm like, oh, crap, Dawn flipped. Like, Dawn did something. And so then I was mad at Dawn at that point because I knew what was going on. Um, that was basically what happened with that. And then the rest of its history, you watched the show. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the beginning, right? Because you, you ended up in the Minority Alliance, and then you got threatened, essentially, by Philip. Yeah. We have numbers. We yeah. don't need you. What was that like for you coming into the game and then facing that? Yeah. Um, immediately when I saw Philip at the start of the game, like I went into it like, you know what? This is so random and crazy. Just play it like however you want. I mean, half this game is luck. And when I went and saw Philip, I mean, the first thing I said to him was like, my family thinks you're, thinks you're a joke, basically. Which, knowing... Well, you set him off. I said that right at the start, and you can see him say that. And I just said it like, like people think I'm a joke. Like, if you can't laugh about yourself, I don't, like, I just thought, like, oh, it's funny. I didn't say it to say, you are a joke. I said, people, like, people, oh, people You're laugh. sharing something you had in common. Yeah. Not. I thought maybe, but no, that's not Philip's personality. And immediately he was like, you know what? I don't like you anymore. I don't like who you, like, what you're doing. 
and he and he basically propositioned me at that point to say you're with me or against me and I didn't want to that's just a bunch of crap I didn't like that at all um, I wanted to play with Francesca as well which like that was a horrible strategic decision in the end but I liked Francesca Francesca was a cool cool person I thought maybe she was gonna play more of a game like she would have been a great partner if she would have made it through that first vote um, but that didn't happen at all. Um, the first half of the game, it was basically me trying to work my way back into some, something, or work my back. So, what was the key? How did you do it? Uh, basically, what I did was I just said, I just said to people like, I'm not playing a strategic game. I'm a vote if you need it. Like, use me if you need me, because there are all these other big egos moving around in the game. Uh, my whole strategy this time around. So you actually had to go under the radar. Yes. Under the radar, I thought was my best chance uh, to get make it through. And people always say like, "Oh, Survivor respects big moves." They say the game respects big moves. It doesn't respect big moves if you make them bad. Like, like people have won making no moves whatsoever. It's good for TV if you make a big move, but it's not necessarily the smartest thing to do. So I don't. I I thought you know what? There's so many people on here that want to be on camera. We'll let them do what they want to do. I'll kind of hang out in the background and let them like shoot at each other basically. And I think to a large part, cock. Cochrane did this kind of strategy as well. He let the larger of people hit each other. I mean, Corinne went out that way. Malcolm kind of went out that way. Uh, Andrea went out that way. But Cochrane kind of became a, came more of a player as the bigger players went out. But that was my strategy, and that's why I don't think you saw me at all. I didn't do anything crazy. Yeah, and, you, and there was a lot Until of competition for crazy. Until that. <laughs> so there was a lot of competition for crazy already. There was, yes. Very insane season. There must have been something in the water. <laughs> exactly. That was nuts. So I thought you had beans and rice, yet we see you say you're starving. You guys got it in the auction. What happened? Did you mismanage the food? Huge mismanagement of food. I don't know if you've talked to other survivors about this at all, but right around, like, probably after the merge, um, Andrea decided to start having night rice. And Malcolm kind of jumped on board with it too, and me not wanting to turn down food. I mean, it's hard to go against the grain and say, I don't want this. Like, stop it. It was good. Rice and grain. Good job. <laughs> so, so, I didn't pick that up. So, what happens is they made night rice. So, it was basically three meals a day, and our, our rice was like totally depleted. There actually was a thing that we caught. It was like this huge day when we made way too much rice. We made like enough rice for like 10 tribes of people, and we all had to eat it because it's so valuable. And so, we ate tons of rice. It was total mismanagement of food, on top of the fact that Brandon was dumping it out. Um, you also, oh, so there was that, but you got more food at the auction. We did, we did, but there was horrible mismanagement of food. Um, the other thing that happened as well is that it was a double location. I mean, they filmed in the previous season was filmed there, and then our season was filmed there. There was no, there were no coconuts left on the, that beach by the end of our season. Absolutely no coconuts, which is why you saw me climb the tree. When I was in Palau, there were millions of coconuts. What's next for you, Eric? Uh, what's next for me? I'm doing a lot of comic books. I'm working on a lot of my art stuff. I'm actually coming out with kind of a Survivor-themed parody comic called Starving for Attention. Awesome. It should focus on kind of the bigger personalities, and it kind of makes fun of them, and it, it should be fun to do. Do you have a website? Yeah, uh, www.ericreichenbachcomics.com, and I'm going to start putting stuff on Amazon and all kinds of places. Well, Thanks, I'm, Eric. You guys are great. I'm glad you were back in the game. Yeah, we were really you. happy to see you. know we've been looking you. for you since that first time, and when we got to interview you in New York and all that. Yeah. You're, you've always been special you've been for special us because of that. <laughs> so, we really like yeah. you. We, uh, we wish Thank you well. You. Yeah, we'll, see if there, okay. we'll see if there's another one. Another, like, I would love if they call me back again. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they will, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thanks again. Yeah, okay. Thanks, guys. Right. See you. Bye-bye. Cool. Check out the podcast online, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah.